Okay, recruiter communication. So one of the things that we want to get effective at is stalling indefinitely. If you're not ready to interview somewhere, now there can be some situations in which it's a very specific role that this might not work as well for. Um, But you can always just let a recruiter know, I'm not prepared to interview. It's not a good time. Can we check back in later? Um, Don't give a specific timeline. Don't say, oh, I'll be ready in March because when I'm a recruiter, I'm going to put that on my calendar. I'm going to reach back out to you in March. And if you're still not ready, we might lose, you know, lose touch, right? So you can always stall a recruiter indefinitely. There's lots of hiring going on. The market is really, really strong. Chances are the position that you're interested in is either going to be, um, uh, is either going to be still available or a very, very similar one will be available. Some questions and expectations that you should get to know in the first conversation. Um, down and weightage of topics, right? How much is related to technical versus behavioral, et cetera. If they offer any study materials, most companies will have some sort of packet of like, hey, here's how to prepare. Um, what are the timelines? What does the overall process look like? Um, you know, are there other similar positions the team is hiring for and how best to follow up or contact? I know um, usually it's going to be like for me, email and texting is great. Um, I know some recruiters are, you know, more phone people, some are more LinkedIn people. So um, getting to know your recruiter and know how they most quickly respond. Like for me, email by far, I'll respond to you much quicker than I might if you send me a LinkedIn message. Um, I'll still respond to the LinkedIn message, but I'm checking my email more often. Thank you. Uh, and on the selling, selling indefinitely, uh, have you run into situations in which, say, that kind of gives you like, hey, please get a hold of me, you know, April, April comes and kind of comes back to you and say like, hey, I'm sorry, I'm not ready. And you, you postpone it again. Um, and the third time, what it's going to be the best approach. In other words, if that is the third time the kind that it's not ready for, what will, in your view, what would be the best way of letting the recruiter, hey, I'm still an interest in the role. However, I'm not ready still. What will yeah. be the best approach? So I would say, yeah, don't don't commit to a timeline, right? If you've already committed to a timeline and then they reach out to you, just this time that they reach out to you, just say, hey, you know, I'm really interested, but I just want to make sure that I do really well in the interview. Um, I'm spending a lot of time preparing. Can I connect with you when I'm ready? Just ask them, can I connect when I'm ready? They'll say yes. And then make sure you save their information um, and, you know, then connect with them when they're ready. I had someone today I was working with in September She was a wonderful candidate. I was super excited about her. Um, She wasn't ready to interview and she just reached out to me today. And I'm like super excited about it because now I get to get her in the process and she was great. So um, just whenever they reach out to you for the second or third time, whatever it is, just take the approach of, hey, can I get in touch with you when I'm ready instead of giving them a timeline. Want to become a software engineer at Google? You can, like thousands of our students. You just need to learn from those who've already cleared FANG interviews. At Interview Kickstart, our interview prep courses are developed and taught live by 150 plus instructors from tier one companies like Google and Facebook. Our courses are tailored to help you crack software engineering domain interviews, including backend, full stack, machine learning, embedded systems, data science, and more. To learn more, book your free webinar slot today 